CEO of World Wild uh, Fund for Nature. Doctor, thank you so very much uh, for joining us here on SABC News. Good afternoon, Flo. Well, my, one might argue, as a South African, you've already been uh, observing Earth Hour, given all the load shedding that one has been experiencing of late. Has that made any difference at all? Look, Earth Hour uh, is uh, uh, symbolic in the sense that we ask people to switch off lights for an hour. But, um, you know, we understand, everybody understand that Earth Hour is, in fact, every hour of the day, every day of the week, uh, every every week of the year. So, so um, you know, when ESCOM switches off the lights, the purpose of Earth Hour is not to save electricity per se, but it is to switch on the mindsets to to awaken people to their reliance on nature for providing us with the food we eat, the water we drink, and uh, of course the air that we breathe. Um, that's that's what this is all about. Uh, we understand that uh, Earth Hour is, of course, uh, to be celebrated uh, virtually tonight, and I'm wondering how that uh, will happen and, and how you're encouraging people uh, to participate, who are, uh, you know, the participants or the stakeholders that are really a, a part of it. And how do you encourage, um, you know, those in our society who are vulnerable in any case to take part in something like this? This sounds like something that a privileged group of people would take part in. Oh, let's switch off our lights for an hour and see how fun that would be when there are realistically people in our country who that's their reality on a day-to-day -day, uh, basis so who are you encouraging and who are you drawing to to this campaign really yes so earth hour has over the last decade or so grown into the biggest uh, environmental campaign across the world it mobilizes hundreds of millions of people from across the world and not just the the haves yeah. but but every single uh, individual across the planet so in some countries, uh, you know, uh, in parts of Africa, for example, we celebrate Earth Hour by lighting a candle rather than switching off a light. So as I said, it's very, very symbolic. Um, of course, this year we cannot hold the uh, grand kind of switch off events that, that generally are uh, linked to, to the, the standard Earth Hour across the world. So um, this year we're going virtual, as, as everyone has become accustomed to under COVID. And we're encouraging people to go to the WWF website and then to download a video. It's just a two-minute video and to share that. Um, and I'm sure you'll like it because it's narrated by Dr. John Carney, no. our very own uh, John Carney, yeah. who, of course, needs no introduction. Of course. And uh, he, in, in his own right, is an environmentalist, and he paints the picture in this short video uh, that he narrates of the link between climate change, uh, pollution, waste, COVID, and our deep dependence on nature. So it's, it's, it's a very uh, wonderful thing. And we ask people to, to share this on social media as much as possible because uh, we need to get the word out. Yeah, and then and besides tonight's uh, event, uh, you know, throughout uh, the year, obviously this is, you know, nature is, is with us all the time. We de As you say, we depend on nature. So this isn't just a one-day thing, one-day event. So what are some of the other things that, you know, we can do, you know, throughout uh, uh, the year to kind of observe this, to observe what should really be? And I, and I, I know we always, it sounds so cliche that, you know, it's not uh, one day that we should cel celebrate something or commemorate something, that it, it's something that should be uh, done on a daily basis. You know, like we talk about, uh, you know, women's rights or GBV, we can't just look at one day. It's something that needs to be looked at holistically uh, through, throughout. And I wonder, apart from this, what, what more are you looking at? Yeah, I think, I think this is something exactly as you're saying. This is not something that, that one just uh, notices in passing and says, ah, oh, these guys are onto something. It's something that actually affects every single one of us. So this Earth Hour, specifically, we want to focus uh, the attention of people on the broken relationship between people and nature. Yeah. And basically what that means is that we completely... Uh, underappreciating the, the value of nature, the food it gives us, the water and the clean air. And then, of course, there's also the beauty, the intrinsic value 
of nature. Now, I've seen some inserts that you had a little bit earlier on a daily basis. You know, the issues around plastics, I think this is something that becomes very, very mm. general and clear. That's something where one has to upskill your education in terms of um, how can we keep... Uh, we're not saying that we will do away with plastics in its entirety. But the single-use plastics, for example, there's no, there's no reason for us to be playing around with single-use plastic and then saying that because it, 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 um, you know, it serves a wonderful purpose that it can be justified. So I think the mindset that we're trying to engender with people in this broken relationship between nature and people mm. is to make sure that we always think about the consequences. If you're a government minister about to give permission for a coal mine to be dug inside a water source area that is regarded as strategically important from water production area, then you cannot focus on the few jobs that can be generated within that coal mine. You have to think about the consequences for decades, 50 to 100 years afterwards, in terms of the leaching impacts on the water systems. Yeah. So we have to think about sustainable development, wise development, and not transfer those costs onto future generations. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Duplessis, uh, you know, you, interestingly, you talk about the broken relationship between man and nature. And I'm sure it's, it's, a, it's, fair, it's fair to say that uh, we as humans, uh, uh, you know, mankind, humans have been the most harmful uh, to, to, to nature. So it's, it's a one way uh, um, uh, bad relationship in terms of we're the ones that have actually been so bad to nature and continue to be. And I wonder if there is a possibility of turning the tide, given the fact that some of these things that are so bad for nature are so much a part of our lives i mean you talk about uh, plastic uh, single-use plastic for for example some of us have stopped that um you know we don't, we don't use plastic bags we, we, we bring into the supermarket uh, you know those uh, 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 bags that that are sold um but 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 for for many people that, that's, that's something that, 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 that will never change. They will never want to change that. And then there are other examples. I mean, there's so many I can think of. Um, but they've become such an intrinsic part of our of our day-to-day -day lives that it's, you know, it's, it's almost impossible to change them. And I wonder if there is a possibility to turn the tide on that uh, toxic relationship, which we've caused, actually, the toxicity. We, we're very much full of hope. Uh, we believe that uh, it is indeed possible to turn the tide. I think as there is a growing awakening, and particularly if we look at the caliber of the kids that we're raising nowadays. Yeah. I mean, my generation, uh, I'm a generation or so ahead of you, but my generation certainly has a lot to answer for. The mid-generation, the mothers and fathers of young kids now are the ones who are beginning to wake up and the kids themselves, because they know that we have to build back better. Sadly, that uh, slogan was used in the American election, so <laughs> it's got a bit of a negative connotation. Yeah. But knowing what we know, we certainly have to focus on building back better, doing things better because we know what needs to be done. We know we have to restore degraded patches of nature in order to give us the ability to sequestrate carbon, to uh, give us clean air and water, uh, things I've mentioned earlier. Um, but um, this is possible. You know, if you think of the Ganges River, for example, as perhaps the filthiest river that anyone can think about, well, I can promise you that if I have another 10 or 20 years in my life left, then uh, by that time in two decades, that river will be clean where people can drink from uh, and that is possible and if that can be turned around we can turn around anything we can turn around clip sprays we can turn around the stream that runs through alexandra and everywhere else in south africa we, we simply have to do it because we owe it to ourselves that's what humanity needs this is what human well-being and the greater good is all about all right, Dr. Mornay, it's been a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you so very much uh, for chatting with us and giving us your input here on SABC News, sir. Thank you very much. All right. That's uh, Dr. Mornay Duplessis, CEO of uh, WWF. That's the Worldwide Fund for Nature.